<laughs> yeah. All right, man. <clears throat> Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Got it. Especially uh, on short notice, man. Thank you so much. Right, one day to the next. Yes, and we have uh, Pine Do. Pine Do. Pine Do. Pine Do, yeah. Split it up. Pinedo. Pine See, you know what's funny is that uh, uh, it took me a while to figure out that that's what your your name was. It's like, man, who because I was, I was thinking, we were talking, we did the podcast with Sick Ass Who, and right. I was thinking the whole time, and I'm like, man, this Pine Dew, Pine Dew. I'm like, man, that name, I'm thinking to myself, that, may, that name makes no sense. <laughs> and I am look, and I looked at your card for the longest time, right? and it didn't hit me until, seriously, last Thursday. Seriously? Yeah, like, God. oh, <laughs> man, he's Pinedo. Pinedo. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he took the little hat off the right. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. So yeah. yeah, I was like, oh my god. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just fucking. Hey, man, I'm slow sometimes. No, you're doing good. You're good. <laughs> it took me a while to make that up too. Yeah. Actually, they made it up for me. Los Gringos. Here. Oh, really? Yeah. When I moved here from uh, from Cali, every person that I met that wasn't Mexican <laughs> or part Mexican, they'd call me Pine Dew. No, yeah, they'd call me Pine Dew because they didn't know it was Pinedo. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> that sounds kind of cool. I'll just figure out how to separate it. Mm -hmm. And so that Mexicans say it one way, the gringos say it another way. Yeah, <laughs> Pine Dew. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So I like it. I kept it. Then it's funny because, actually, I didn't keep it that very moment. Um, I let it sit. Then when I met a mutual friend, Billy, he started calling me Pine Dew. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. This is gonna <laughs> stick. Yeah, of course <laughs> Billy would call you Pine Dew, right? right? Yeah. Um, now, just for getting going here, um, yeah. you are, well, I met you through doing the other podcast. You right. also have uh, another mutual friend is uh, Danny. Right. Uh, Applesauce from. Danny uh, Applesauce, Sick Ass Food. Sick Ass Food podcast. Um, how did you meet Danny? Danny, I work with Danny. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, they brought me on board over at, at Davis Lines uh, as a graphic designer. And this guy just walks up from the back, all filled with paint. And I look at him, I, I'm like, man, that guy looks like an asshole. <laughs> 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 Straight up. And yeah. he's like, he doesn't talk to me or say anything, but he just walks mm -hmm. in, like, frowning, like, what the fuck? And, um, you know, later on, I go back there and I'm like, hey, what's up? And I remember the first time I, I said what's up to him, he just looked at me like, what the fuck does this guy want, right? And um, I'm like, ah, whatever. Then uh, I think it was like maybe a few days later, I'm like, hey, how's it going? I guess he's seen me there for a few days. Probably thought, oh, he works here. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. So then he started saying what's up back. And, you know, we just started talking. He, he'd go in there and talk to the boss about different things, about painting, about how he started doing this, you know, venting a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then he's like, I want to get into a podcast. Then he started talking smack about designers. And he's like, man, the guy that was here, I gave him a design to do for me. He hasn't done shit. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, dude, why don't you give it to me? I'll do it for you like within a week. Yeah. So he just looks at me like, this guy's full of shit. He gives me that. He has, he has a weird look to him, mm -hmm. which is like, I don't know how to read him, but... You know, he's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Um. So he just gives me that look, and he doesn't say anything. I'm like, cool, whatever. If you need it, I'm here. If you don't, okay, you know, whatever. <laughs> nice. Then later on, he comes back, and he says, hey, uh, I gave this girl my design. Uh, she was supposed to get it back to me, and it's been about a month. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Damn. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So I'm like, so do you want me to work on it? <laughs> <laughs> And then he goes, oh, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. Then uh, he comes back later. He's like, man, that girl bailed on me. <laughs> Damn. Yes. The, he's like, can you work on it? I'm like, go for it. So he sends it to me. I shoot it back to him like pretty quick. He's like, orale. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's I haven't known him for that long, but he seems pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He, pretty, he, pretty straight forward to er on, on everything yeah you know? he's he's uh Calls it like it is kind of exactly he's yeah. no bullshit sort of thing yeah. he's uh yeah I, I tend to like people like that yeah that don't give me bullshit you know, the best kind out. yeah yeah now uh 
I didn't. We didn't. I forgot to mention you are a uh, a designer, graphic designer, illustrator, and an illustrator. Right. Yeah. The um. Now I think some people may have seen a lot of your work on uh, through the Instagrams. You seem to um. Uh, for sure, I think um. Uh, seem run the same circles that uh, you did. Billy's I- right. illustration for uh, his uh, engagement, his family portrait. Yeah, it's just, that was his uh, Christmas present to his fiance at the time. Nice. Um, so I ju- I did that for him. Um, then I've done other stuff. Um, for artists and just regular people. Um. But Billy's was a little bit special mm-hmm. because he's been like a person that's kind of been really there. You know, he's mentored me through a lot of design. Nice. Um, um, I think nowadays when I talk to my wife about design, I'm like, what would Billy do? <laughs> 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 so nice. Yeah. I like we, um, go, we go back a bit. Yeah, I love Billy. He's he's great. He's um, I met him, too, also at work and he's helped mm-hmm. me a lot along too it's yeah, and throwing me some jobs and things like that he's right. a cool cat for sure yeah. always and that's i think this is one of the things that uh, I'm, I'm we're gonna get into in a bit as far as um uh uh let's say um the quote-unquote business side of, of this thing mm-hmm. uh, because i think that and i've mentioned this before with other people that are on here that do um uh let's just say they do artwork for hire right so there's this huge balance that you guys seem to to do with um uh art right and commercialism to where you almost are at the mercy of someone's uh for lack of a better term for someone's ignorance Correct. like you you draw something that'll be badass and they're like they don't see it and it's right. like man <laughs> It's like, dude, what happened there? Yeah. Sort of thing. I mean, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with clients like that? You know, it's funny. <clears throat> when when I met Billy, I was working for a local company, and they had just brought him on. And by that, I was maybe there for like three years. And by that time, we were dealing with a lot of truck drivers. And they would come on, and they'd come over to the shop and say, hey, I need truck lettering. So it's hard well, it was, it was kind of hard to please some of the truck drivers because they didn't know what the hell they wanted. They're like, we want something cool. Mm-hmm. We're like, all right, what the fuck are you into, you know? We all want something cool. Right, but what is mm-hmm. it? Cool is something different to something to everybody, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> it was like I got to a point where I was doing all this truck lettering for, I said for truck drivers, and everybody came in with a different... Um, perspective on, on what cool was right and some of them thought was cool was something that had a lot of detail in it that was really flashy others thought that cool was something simple um, minimalism and then uh, then Billy came along and uh, I remember meeting Billy and by that point I was kind of like over it you know I was like truck drivers come in and tell me that oh that that looks like shit mm-hmm. I was like fuck that's the coolest thing I've done yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then Billy came in and he's like, that looks like shit. (laughs) 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 And I'm like, oh, okay. And I got to thinking, I'm like, what, what allows this guy to, to be able to, who has a bachelor's degree in design to come over and tell me that my work looks like shit. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I could sell it to a mom and pop and they're like, oh, that's the greatest thing ever. But this fucker comes and tells me my work looks like shit. Mm -hmm. So then. I started looking at his work, and his work was very minimalistic. Yeah. And I'm, th- I'm like, fucker, you didn't even think about that. You just fucking slapped it on. He came up with this one project called uh, Black Door. Um, that was part of the name. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say the whole name. but mm-hmm. It had to do with the Black Door, right? And he just makes a fucking door that's partially open, and he goes, there, Black Door. And I'm like... That took no thought. Everybody opens a fucking door every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, right. But everybody remembers they open the door every day. And I started thinking, well, it kind of has a point. Mm-hmm. Right. And and the more I, I kind of um, 
hung out with them, I kind of disliked them. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, hmm, I got to dislike them for a reason. He probably has a point in all this shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, as a designer, I would look at my own stuff and I would think, well, is it really all that great? You know, people are, somebody's going to tell me it sucks regardless. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to tell me it's shit. And am I okay with it? Then I thought, fuck, I, I took it from truck drivers. Truck drivers are, you know, the truck drivers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Their opinion is kind of like a dime a dozen. They all have a different opinion, whatever. So I learned to just say, you know what? Fuck it. Everybody's going to have an opinion regardless of what I do, what I design, what I say. Regardless of anything that happens, everybody's going to have an opinion. You know, just let it slide. Fuck you, it. You, so you've learned to not take it so personal? Yeah, I don't take it personal. At the beginning, when I first got out of... Uh, when I was in college and high school, I would take it really personal. I was like, well, fuck, you don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to be able to please everybody at the same time. Yeah. So, fuck it. If you don't like it, it's like I told my followers, if you don't like my stuff or if you don't like my opinion, don't follow. Me. It's that simple. Yeah. You know, somebody else will. Yeah. And it's a, uh, it's a yeah. big, um, it's, it's a, a big shit show. Yeah. I think when it, it comes to pl trying to please everybody, sort yeah. of thing uh so but but in your um let's just say in your genre mm -hmm. i think it's it's pretty difficult to um it seems to be difficult to like okay well i did this right and it's not like you can save it for somebody else a lot of the time unless it's in the same sort of business or something like that it's like if they don't like it, you almost just have to throw it away and go into the, uh, you know what, fuck it. I just, it's just a great piece of work or I spent all this time on there and um, it's for no one but right. me. I'm the only one that's going to be able to appreciate this. And that would seem to be a little it, frustrating, I think, at, at some point. No, or you also... Uh, um, I, I think a little bit. Mm -hmm. because there are times when I do things for, like, last uh, December I did a design for this one girl, and I thought it was pretty badass. Mm -hmm. You know, I put my, I kind of put my all into it, and I thought, well, fuck, dude, you're putting your all into it, and what if she doesn't like it? You know, it always, that always plays in the back of my head, what if they don't like it? Yeah. And I thought, well, okay, fuck it, if she likes it, cool, if she doesn't, well, I'll just fucking hold on to it. Well, she didn't like it. <laughs> 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 and she told me straight out, you know, I don't like it. Can you start over? And I'm like, oh, fuck. I already spent like fucking 16 hours on this. Damn. And I'm like, okay, cool. Fuck it. I'm like, I'm going to charge you again because um, you didn't give me proper direction. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, all right, cool. But yeah, I want something else. I'm like, do you want something else or do you want me to start over? What do you want? She's like, oh, yeah, just start over. I'm like, all right, fuck it. So I took that piece and uh, I kind of changed it up a little bit mm -hmm. uh, and photosh I photoshopped it, then I posted it. And I didn't get that many likes, but I was okay with it mm -hmm. because I knew that behind the scenes I had put stuff in there. Or I, there were times where I was thinking of certain things and I was like, fuck, okay, that's my that's my thing right there. You know? And uh, I got to do it again, a little bit different, but, you know, it's... It has a little bit of personal personality that I put in it, mm -hmm. but it's not mine. So I kind of just, it's there for everybody to see, but nobody knows why it's there. Yeah. So. That's well, at least there is uh, somewhat of an outlet for yeah. for that. But, I mean, it was just like, do you go into a job, do you, when you feel someone out, mm -hmm. um, do you go into a job going like, all right, I'm going to do three of these? Or there's three potential um, uh, works or projects that this person might like. Is there a point where you really think about like, okay, how much time am I really going to spend on this project for this person? Because you kind of like get to feel like yeah. maybe, you know, at one point is it like really business? Like, hey, man, I, I can't spend this much time on this because they probably, you know, it's got to do with their budget too, but... 
does that play a bigger part than than it should or than it does or do you got it dialed on right to where it's I like don't, it don't I don't have it dialed on mm-hmm. I don't um I I don't I also don't estimate time I just I'm like you know what here's the price that's what it is I'll do it for you and we'll go from there okay <laughs> as far as giving them options I learned that when I give people options they kind of come back and want to change shit left and right Oh, uh, okay. Especially in logo design. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that makes me work a little bit more. The one thing I learned with Bill, I'm going to bring Bill up a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> simply because I did learn a lot from him. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when when customers come to you, they kind of don't know what they want. Mm-hmm. Okay. And my job is to show them a direction, a direction that might make their business better. And if I can't sell them a package, I'm going to give them a logo or a design. And if they can't carry it, they're going to fail. Mm-hmm. But that's their failure. That's not my failure. Because once I'm done with it, it's it's uh, up to them completely. Okay. Um, but going back to giving them options, um, I try, like I said, I try not to do that that much anymore. Unless, of course, they're really paying well for it. And then it is worth the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but most of the time, I'll be like, I'll sit on it for, for a little bit, maybe a week or two, think about it, and then I'll present it to them. I'll tell them, this is what I see in, in your your logo. This is ki- kind of where I see you headed with it. Do you want to do that? And they'll either say yes or no. And then I'm okay, cool. Then I'm going to give you more options. But I'm not going to sell them to you as a package. I'm just going to give you a logo. You tell me if you like it, and you're done. Okay. So there's a um, – I try to make I, – I try to distinguish them, you know, the people that want their business to go further versus the people that just want a logo, a cool design for a shirt, or a design for, you know, just for something. Mm-hmm. So um, like um, last – sorry. Mm-hmm. Last year, no, not last year, a couple of years ago, I did, a, um, I presented an idea for a gym to a customer and I sold him the whole package deal, right? He, uh, he didn't want it. <laughs> wow. So I'm like, all right, cool. I thought the idea was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to wait for somebody else to come over and somebody else who owns a gym to come to me, design something for them and I'll sell it to them, see if they want to go with it. So it's kind of like recycling my ideas yeah. a little bit, but kind of not really. Yeah, <laughs> I'm presenting them a direction. If they want to take it, like I said, it's cool. You guys could go that direction or just find your own way. Yeah, but that's what I I, I kind of try to do. But I always try to lead them in a, in the direction where they'll profit, where they'll be able to take their brand and and just kind of like market it throughout mm-hmm. in different ways and different um commercial uh different medias you know just try to make their the most with their brand yeah and some people don't see it that way some people just say oh it's a logo boom we're done yeah like, all right how often do you meet people that are really savvy at that and really appreciate what you do versus people who just like don't just just don't see it at all it's kind of uh 75 25 <laughs> really yeah yeah some people are just like i i don't know what i want <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, just do your thing. I'm like, okay, cool. And some people are like really, really picky on what they want. Mm-hmm. But then they realize like towards the end of the project that that really isn't what they want. <laughs> okay. All and right. I'm like, okay, so now do you want direction? I'll give you direction if that's what you need now. Okay. And uh, sometimes they take it. Sometimes they say, no, nah, it's not in my budget. I'm like, cool. Okay. Yeah, because that plays a role. Yeah, that plays a big role. One of the things that... Bringing up Billy again, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the Billy podcast. Yeah, this is a Billy B podcast. Yeah, is that I understood because this also comes into uh, if and when I'm pitching something for a photography idea or, you know, what kind of portrait somebody wants. Because right. I don't do, man, again, I don't do weddings. Right. Engagement pictures on the normal stuff isn't my thing. I look at all as portraiture and mm-hmm. I'm really more into capturing what it is that I make it stand out, or I want to make it to, in like in my opinion, the best portraits are the ones where someone who has no idea who that person is but still wants to 
have it hanging on their wall. Right. That's to me, those are like the best kind of portraits. Right. And so in order to get to that point, I need to, I yeah. need to get information from somebody. Right. I need to be able to, um, Hey, what are your things? What do you like? This, that, and the other. And I got that from Billy to where like he, I hear him when he starts pitching in this stuff where he starts asking people what they want, what their budget is, this, that, and the other, he gets down to specifics, statistics, mm-hmm. budget. Right. There's no room forever. Once <laughs> by the time somebody gets out of the room and goes, what do you want to do? Where do you see yourself in five years? Right. Or what's your business plan? What's this? And then it's like, that's like, what I took to in my approach to where like, Hey, what do you want? What's your vibe? What are we going for? Where do you want it? And it's just like, so at the end of the day, if you do all that work in the beginning of the project, it seems to everyone's happier towards the end. Yeah, exactly. Cause then nobody has, it's nobody's fault, but there I see it, you know? And of course though, and, and it's not definitely not trying to align myself to what you guys do on, on that level uh, mm-hmm. is that, yeah, there's a certain little bit of like, oh, I don't like the way I look in this picture or I don't like this, that, and the other as opposed to like working, I would assume sometimes a week or two on something where yeah. uh, you're not. You don't get the power of control. Z, yeah. Huh? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, again, it's, I find it, I keep, referring to i love you guys' patience right and i love your your ability to keep producing work that it seems to me a lot of times people shit on yeah. because they don't they don't understand and it could be it could be a picasso yeah, in a sense yeah. it could be the next coca-cola label it could be the next but ibm playboy label fucking look around and they would not take it because they they want something different. Yeah, they they <laughs> want something different, which I find r- ridiculous and funny. Yeah. But what um, were you always? Did you always l- were an artistic like drawing and stuff like that in the beginning? Um, as a kid, you grew up drawing, or yeah, yeah, I picked it up uh, when I was really small, mm-hmm. um, five, four or five years old, if I remember correctly. Okay. Yeah. Um, reason I picked it up, it wasn't. I guess you could say it was a gift, but mostly it was because I was super hyper. <laughs> okay. So my parents were, they're like, you know what, fuck it, let's give him crayons and a, a uh, notebook and see what he could do. <laughs> okay. So that's how it all started, Mickey Mouse, Mighty Mouse. Um, if some people go further back, they don't know who Mighty Mouse is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but cartoons, that's what, what I, all I was into. Um, but yeah, my throughout my, um, throughout growing up, you know, cartoons were, were my thing. Mm-hmm. So trying to replicate them or reproduce them or even come up with my own was always kind of important to me mm-hmm. simply because that was my only outlet um, from getting in trouble uh, for a, at least for a certain point in my in my life. Um, but, uh, you know, as in my teen years, I realized that having fun was a little bit more important. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I, and I definitely put that on the side until, uh, of course, um, I got back into high school. Then I realized I could make money off of it. Okay. Because during high school, <coughs> it was interesting. Uh, there was this movement back in the day mm-hmm. um, called La Quebradita. <laughs> okay. Do you remember that? The dance? The dance. Yeah. It was a ranchero dance or yeah. banda dance. Mm-hmm. Well, when that movement came, I'm from L.A. in case some listeners don't know. Mm-hmm. But once that movement came, there was a bunch of clubs out there or not not dance clubs they would call groups of people would call themselves clubs versus gangs <laughs> oh okay all right so when these clubs started popping up everywhere they would be like um aficionados to to different groups um banda groups and i started making flyers for them because there, there was the need okay so they'd hit me up they're like you know how to draw right i'm like yeah so they like make us a flyer like okay so i realized that all these people throwing backyard parties needed flyers and they'd hit me up and i'd start i started making money off of simple little flyers nice um so that's kind of when i got back into illustrating and designing and and all that um 
because I knew there was a profit in it. Yeah. And it wasn't big, but for me, it was what, uh, you know, money for candy, money for soda, money for beer back in the day, you know? Yeah. So I uh, I realized that there was a, there was money there. So I, I kind of stuck to it for a bit um, till I got out of high school. Then once I got out of high school, I kind of stopped again. Okay. And the reason I stopped was because I had to work. <laughs> you had to work, huh? Yeah, my parents, uh, if you're Mexican, well, most of the time, you, once you're out of high school, you got to get a job and, you know, <laughs> yeah, for yourself, buddy. <laughs> exactly. So that's kind of what happened. And, uh, yeah, as, as I uh, was working, I kind of gave up on that, put mm-hmm. that off on, on the back burner again. I didn't draw or didn't do design for, for a while um, till I met this one girl who is now my wife. Oh. And uh, she kind of pushed me to go back to school and get a degree and, you know, go back to what I, I love doing. Okay. So that's kind of how I ended up back in design, back in into illustrating. So it's kind of like it's been back and forth. Yeah. You know? And even during my marriage, there have been years where I just don't produce anything. Mm-hmm. And then there are years where I've just been hammering it out. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little bit of both, you know. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much how, how it came about. But before then, before you you went to school for graphic design, but before then, had you studied art or illustration or or drawing, sketching at all before that? No, I didn't. Um, like I said, I used to um, I used to trace um, like all my superheroes, like Batman, Superman, all those. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't think about I didn't. I didn't know, I guess was a proper word. I didn't know that there was a uh, a study for that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. It was something you had to study. I figured all these guys like. Well, in fact, one of the reasons that why I didn't think you you had to study was because my brother one time bought a big portrait, of Picasso. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he hung it in our bedroom, and I looked at him like, "What the hell is that?" And it was a drawing of uh, a hand holding flowers. And I looked at it, and he goes, that's a Picasso. And I'm like, okay, what's what's so special about it? Mm-hmm. And he goes, well, it's a Picasso. Don't you know who Picasso is? I'm like, mm. <laughs> if that's a Picasso, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that when I was in high school, I did research Picasso. Picasso, when, when he was a younger kid, he was a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know that. So... I wondered why did this guy Picasso go from drawing something that was photorealistic to fucking line drawing, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it boggles me. I'm like, why? Why would you go backwards? You know, it's like, wouldn't you want to go forward and and just do better things than yeah. just fucking little sketches like that? And I guess it um, it dawned on me that he probably did study to do all that, unless it was a gift. Um. But then he just decided not to. Because during when I was in college, I remember my art teacher telling me, you're going to learn all the rules just so that later on you could break them. Yeah. And I figured, okay, that's why Picasso did that. Mm-hmm. He pretty much knew how to do everything, but he decided not to, which is a complete rebel from what, what he was taught. Yeah, he was, he's got a quote saying that he basically l- took him a lifetime to learn how to draw like a child. Yeah, which is <laughs> weird. Yeah. <laughs> And a lot like that um, Benjamin Button movie. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and again, he was uh, you know a lot of people. It, this is w- exactly what um, I like to bring up every once in a while. Is like, yeah, there's there's talent right. in the beginning, but there is also a level of education that has to go involved too. And uh, you. Picasso studied, and for the most part, he's regarded as one of the best, uh, and arguably the best artist that uh, up to this point. Um, right. You know, you you look up, you can't do, you can't talk about art and not talk about Picasso. Right. Only because that guy worked on so many different mediums and in so many different genres, and he fucking killed it in everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, he was yeah. just he was, and it's not like uh, a lot of times I wonder like. Is this piece of art worth something because it just carries the name, or is it because it's actually good? And a lot of the times, I look at Picasso shit, and I'm like, man. <laughs> I look at Guernica, and I'm like, dude, that's 
that's a fucking masterpiece. I right. love that shit. It's just like I had that thing hanging on my wall everything and I looked at it every day was like, man, that how do you think like that? You know, and yeah. again it's it's a lot of passion involved and stuff like that. Yeah, because so. I'd wake up every day looking at that damn Picasso holding flowers and I'm mm-hmm. like, how the fuck is that worth anything? Yeah. <laughs> how is that more valuable than anything I could do? I was what, maybe eight or nine when I when I saw that drawing. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know if it's a drawing or a painting or it's I don't know how he made it. But I'm like how is that worth anything? Yeah. I remember my brother, yeah, that's worth millions of dollars. I'm like, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's the, the thing is, is like, yeah, a lot of people can do that too. And it's just like, well, and that's where the whole art thing comes into mind too, where it's yeah. like, I think that art, certain art is inflated to the point where, man, really Jackson Pollock is worth $500 million. <laughs> but then I look at a Jackson Pollock and I'm like, yeah, if I had five hundred million dollars, I'd probably pay that for Jackson <laughs> Pollock. Yeah, but cool. it's a it's a balance this way though, because now you're almost not buying things like Picasso's or Jackson Pollock's or Van Gogh's or Monet's, not just because you really really appreciate art. It's because now it's just a great way to invest your money. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They, uh, it's not really the fair to everybody there. else, but but yeah, it's you know there. So the the formal training didn't really happen until later on in life to where you started, you went to school for graphic design and right. uh, um, illustration or just... Yeah, I went to school for, well, <laughs> I went to school for architecture. Oh, okay. So um, for some reason I had it in my mind that I wanted to be an architect simply because I had seen um, a Frank Lloyd Wright's buildings. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, this guy's a badass. I want to do that. <laughs> he made me. He made me want to be an architect too, right? Yeah. But then, once falling I, water is a <laughs> shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> then uh, I remember during my second year, we got into building codes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, fuck! I don't want to be a lawyer. Yeah. I don't want to know anything about this shit. You know, mm-hmm. this is not for me. I want to be able to create shit. Well, I dropped that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to do architecture anymore. I don't want to deal with building codes. I don't want to deal with materials. I just want to design a building, make it look cool, and done. Mm-hmm. Um, I During that time when I was taking architecture, I was big on comic books. So uh, simultaneously, I was looking at all the drawings that were, that all, all the artists actually, that were coming up during that time, which was about the n- mid-90s. So we had like Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane, we had um, um, Scott Campbell. Uh, I forget the the rest, but I was looking at their artwork and all the details mm-hmm. that they were putting into their artwork, and I I think fuck these guys can make awesome buildings, but they could also make awesome drawings. Yeah, uh, sequential art. I'm like fuck, I want to do comics now. So I went from looking at comics but not really caring for them to saying I want to be an architect. Then after being an architect, wanting to be an architect, not being an architect, I said, fuck, I don't want to deal with all these fucking rules. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't want to be an architect. Mm-hmm. So then I figured, fuck it, I'm just going to design. And what's interesting is that at that time when, when I wanted to go into design, I the job I was working was a, um, I was a machine operator. I was uh, running an embroidery machine uh, for a local uh, embroidery shop. And... There was a designer there who was running an old Mac. Um, I forgot what. I don't even remember what it was, to be honest with you. But that guy at that time was making about 15 bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. And I was only making minimum wage. Okay. And I figured, fuck, that guy's making a good living. And nobody was doing a design on computers at the time. So I figured, fuck, maybe I could learn to do design on computers. So as I was studying design in college... You know, it was like uh, commercial design. I said, fuck this. I want to do design on computers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just so I could do what that guy does. Yeah. So that's when that part of, of my life changed a little bit. It was still kind of like drawing, mm-hmm. but now it was com- computerized. Did you have e- experience with computers before no. then? No. Really? Yeah, not at all. But um, I had worked uh, that embroidery place for... For like five years, maybe, when the designer, um, a female, she decided, 
Well, she got pregnant and had to quit. Okay. She had to go on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. And I was moved up to that position from being a machine operator because during my breaks, I would just sit outside on you know, on the big lunch table and I'd draw. I'd sketch. And I would sketch my coworkers. I'd sketch the whole fucking warehouse where the machines were. And I didn't notice, but during that time, the boss would always walk in and out, in and out. And he'd always probably look at me mm -hmm. drawing. And um, I guess one day he told the, the company manager, like, that guy knows how to draw. He's good with the paper and the pencil. Bring him in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they moved me up from, I want to say, one week to the next, you know. Okay. So that's when I figured, okay, fuck it. So if I could do this by hand, this girl's doing it by hand and on the computer, I can make myself more money here. Yeah. So I think it was more about money than what it was for design. Okay. And uh, it kind of worked out for a bit. Um. Simply because I, I, I was kind of stuck. Okay. I was stuck just doing what I was told all the time. Um, doing, replicating designs that were already made. Nothing was mine. Nothing was creative. Nothing was original. Okay. It was all just replicating things that were already done. And um, then I had the opportunity to, to go from a design where I was just being repetitive, not creative, being pretty much a copy machine. Mm-hmm to another job where I was able to create a little bit more. And uh, that's when um, I realized that using software like Illustrator, um, Photoshop gave me that liberty, especially when I'm making page layouts and design logo designs for, for magazines. Um, so that kind of changed my perspective on where I wanted to be. And again, it was just a big learning curve with that software to, yeah. to where it, you learn the software because of necessity, not because you were stoked about the software right. in the first place, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it was more of a necessity of me wanting to, to get higher up the ladder than mm -hmm. what it was of you know, just wanting to learn the software. I didn't care for the software. Yeah. <laughs> it was based on money at the time. So when you, um, during that time when you were doing other, basically working as a copy machine, Right. Um, did your motivation kind of falter a little bit or did you always know, hey, man, you know, this is just a stepping stone. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make this happen. Um, how did you just keep going? Because I can understand how you're like, fuck this. This is just bullshit. Yeah. But I think you found out that you were really good at something and that you wanted to keep going at it. Well, I actually what happened was I stopped. OK. <laughs> All right. I completely stopped doing anything at home. Um like I said, that was uh, many dry spells uh, of creativity during my life. Um, when I was, when I went from from being a machine operator to a designer, a uh, copy machine, I didn't want to be creative simply because my everyday job was not being creative. Okay. Um, I still loved watching movies, reading comic books, and all that, but I figured, you know what, I don't want to be creative. I, I think I was wearing myself out um, or burning myself out just being repetitive and I kind of didn't see myself um, creating anything important or anything that mattered but just being a copy machine is, is how I saw myself and I think that sunk in for a while and I thought well fuck what what am I getting out of this okay you know? besides a paycheck besides a paycheck yeah and I guess because I was doing like three things at a time okay I was I was married I was going to school, and I was working full time. So, there was kind of no time for me to to be creative, because I was out, while I was going to school, I was getting rid of my my general education classes. Okay. Um, that was after I dumped my architecture um classes. Mm. I had given up on architecture. Said fuck it, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'm gonna sit on it for a little bit, and do my get rid of my general educations. Um. I wasn't creative during that that time. That was a good two years. Wow. Then, uh, like I said, I was being a copy machine, not creative at all. Then I met this one guy in in one of my classes. I didn't know he was into comic books, but apparently he was. He's uh, he was an African American, mm -hmm. and um, he'd have his uh, his drawings on his book. And I remember asking him, "I'm like, what's that for?" And he's like, "Oh, that's my my story." The characters from my story. And 
I guess that's when it hit me. I'm like, well, fuck, what makes him so special? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he have a book? Uh-huh. And he would, I started hanging out with them for a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, he would tell me the stories of, of his characters. And I thought, well, fuck, I've been collecting comic books for all this time, which is about five years then. And I've been looking, admiring the artwork. However, I haven't done nothing about it. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do about it? And I started creating my own characters. I figured if he could do it, why can't I? And like I said, I was on a dry spell. And when I picked up illustration again, it was different. It was different because I think for some reason, my, my, um, what I call this? I, I picked up that as I analyzed all the comic books I was reading, I, subconsciously picked up on movement that they were placing in the illustrations. So I learned on my own how to do sequential art and how to place characters in certain frames um, without doing it prior. Okay. If that makes any sense. (laughs) Yeah. Because I I don't know if I just recorded in my head or or Mm -hmm. what the hell happened, but I was making little stories here and there um, that I, you know, to this day, I don't know where the hell they went. <laughs> but it, it's something that clicked at that yeah, particular moment. Yeah, it just moment. clicked. I didn't, I, I made my characters, I made my my little sequential stories, and I was like, okay, cool. Uh, now what? Mm-hmm. But I didn't, I'd never done it before, and it just happened. Okay. And I thought, okay, cool, this is, this is fun. I could be creative with this. Yeah. And, um, that's when I decided to kind of put my general ed education classes on hold <laughs> <laughs> and go back into into um actual physical drawing. So I was taking my general education classes, I was taking some computer graphics classes and I was doing regular drawing, freehand drawing, okay. live drawing. Um in fact I went uh I went I studied animation um while I was studying web design. So, uh, while I was studying motion graphics all at the same time. Okay. <laughs> so I was I was always busy with something that was really, now that I think about it, I really don't have rest. Yeah. I didn't have any rest during that time when I was working, going to school, um, married, um, doing my own little comic things. You know, I didn't really, I don't remember resting now that I think about it. Okay. I don't remember having a vacation. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was going to say, like, when you started picking up on stuff and, like, that the, the motion within the frames, I guess right. I'll call it for lack of a, a, a better term. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, do you think it was because you were probably submerged and looking at much more comic books, but it looks yeah. like you were submerged in a bunch of other things as well. Right. And I think somehow all that ended up clicking yeah, at I, once I, sort of thing. So. <laughs> now, I'm curious as to... Um, is there, in your opinion, a difference between illustration and art? Or can one be the other or is one separate from the other? I think illustration and art, you mean like coexist? or? Well, let me see. Why do you call it illustration as opposed to maybe artwork? I think of it as... Okay, if I'm using a pencil, it's illustration. <laughs> okay. I try to keep it simple. If, mm-hmm. And once it's done, it's artwork. Okay. Um, I don't know why. I've I've always thought of it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I know artwork could be many different things, but I guess in when I was studying how to how to make an, a comic book, it went from illustration to a final piece of art during a, a process of penciling, inking, uh, coloring, and adding copy. Mm-hmm then it became a piece of art because first it was just an illustration. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. Because even nowadays where you're looking at, at just illustrations, pencil drawings, um, even with inks, they're art. And yeah. they sell for a lot of money. And I'm like, okay, well, that's a good question. I, I never mm-hmm. thought of it that way. <laughs> okay. But. Yeah. Do you, um, so being, it seems like you're heavily influenced by comics. Right. Comic books. Right. Um, well, first question is: uh, Did you ever get also into anime, the Japanese versions of things like that, or is that not? Uh, no, no. Well, actually, I didn't, but my kids did. Okay. I hated anime. 
<laughs> I, I don't know why I hated it, but my um, I looked at it. I'm like, well, fuck, that looks like fucking Picasso shit, where it's just like lines going here and there. In yeah. fact, even growing up as a kid, I remember watching Robotech. Do you remember Robotech? Oh, this is that's what got me in the anime. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I remember watching Robotech, and mm. I was like, eh, I don't see the point of that. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that thing changed my life, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was watching He Man, Thundercats, and all that. Mm-hmm. And, but anyway, um. My kids, when when I had my my oldest, he was into um, Yu-Gi-Oh, those little Yu-Gi-Oh cards that came out maybe in early two thousands. Uh huh. He got into that, and then when my other kid was born, he got into Pokemon, and all that's anime. And they often told me, "Dad, draw me an anime. Draw me an anime." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Fuck no, I hate anime. <laughs> <laughs> I hate anime." And this was way before social media. Um. Then, th- for some reason, they just kept on bugging me throughout the years. Okay. Um, maybe about three or four years ago, um, one of my kids asked me, why don't you draw me an anime? I'm like, fuck, all right, fine. They've been asking me for this long, so I, I did it, right? Mm-hmm. I drew them an anime. They're like, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm like, what the fuck? Nice. I I don't know. It j- then they, they, they kept on asking me, hey, why don't you draw me this in anime? Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll draw him that. And that's when um, I think Instagram started getting popular. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I was uh, I was going through a, a dark time in my life with my wife, with my kids. But I was trying to keep mm. it together. Okay. And I remember I, um, I listened to this radio show uh, every morning at that time. Oh, I still do. But from then till now, I've been listening to that radio show every morning. And one of the, the DJs on there, um, or personalities, he's not a DJ, I don't play music. One of the personalities on there, he kind of put up a um, a challenge. He's like, if you follow me, I'll follow you back. I'm like, well, shit. Okay. So a bunch of people are going to ask him, are going to ask to be followed. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, what's going to make me different? You know, why am I different from all those followers? And I thought about my kids and I'm like, hmm, what if I draw them in anime? And I did. But I remember I sent him a message, and I'm like, this fucker's not going to reply. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's got, he had like 500,000 followers at the time. I'm like, this fucker's not going to reply. And I'm like, hey, uh, will you follow me if I draw you? And he says, okay, let's see if that's true, if you're really going to draw me. And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, but don't follow me until I draw you. After I draw you, you follow me, and I'll follow. Well, I'm already following you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I took that weekend and I drew him in anime style, and I sent it to him. Um, I was kind of new to Instagram, and uh, he liked it, and he reposted it. And after he reposted it, I started getting a bunch of followers myself, and I started getting requests for for that anime style drawing. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. And it was in a style that I kind of was really, really new to. Mm-hmm. That I had not done maybe, I I had done maybe about five times prior. And I didn't really have a feel for it. So I started getting requests for from people everywhere. You know, I want to draw you know, me and my, my kids, me and my wife, me and my girlfriend, draw my girlfriend. I'm trying to impress her. I'm like, holy shit. Wow. So I'm kind of back where I was in high school where I had all these kind of clubs asking me for flyers Mm -hmm. and making money off of it. I'm like, well, shit, maybe I hit something here that I wasn't expecting. And that kind of kind of brought me out of that um, that place where I was. Um, Like I said, I was going through a dark time in in my marriage and my Mm -hmm. life. And that kind of brought something back. Okay. Um, Yeah. Because I had stopped drawing for for a while, but anime, <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess I've learned to have a respect for it, mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's not really my style. Yeah, but it's what I've done <laughs> <laughs> by mistake, I guess, or by accident, or uh, I don't for you know that's <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but that's how I, I fell there. You fell into it? I fell into it. So would you consider the drawings that you have up on your Instagram now more anime style than your vibe or well I don't even know if they're anime to be honest. Yeah. With you. 
I know they're a mixture of my my vibe with the anime, but yeah. I know they're they're not either or. Because I do want to keep it on the anime side. Okay. Simply because that's where I've been headed for these past three or four years, mm-hmm. but I'm not in anime. <laughs> yeah. I you could ask me, have you watched this or have you have you watched that? And I I'm like I have no clue what that is, bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Robotech, uh, I remember because you know back in the days, I know some of the Studio Ghibli movies um, that my daughter makes me watch with her. Okay, um, they're pretty cool, but they're a little bit different from what I draw. Artistically, they don't really grab you or speak to you or anything like that. The movies, uh huh. They, the um, the character development of the movies really grabs me. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like how they take the time to, to bring you into the character's life mm-hmm. and show you their everyday life, which is kind of like what we have ourselves as, as real people. Yeah. But they show it to you in a cartoon way, which kind of makes, at least for me, it makes me reflect on, on my life and think, well, fuck, do I do that when I, when I eat a couple of noodles? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I kind of, I, th- I think back and I'm like, okay, well, if I, if I make a comic book again, do I want it to be anime or do I want to go back into these, to the style where where I used to admire these artists like Jim Lee again, mm-hmm. uh, Mark Silvestri, um, Michael Turner, all those, which is a, is is a whole lot more detailed artwork versus simple lines, which is like Picasso. Yeah, and it I don't know, it just boggles me a bit. <laughs> hmm. Well, I was actually going to ask you in a second. After all the uh, this influence by comic books and stuff, did you end up making your own comic book? Did you end up making your own characters and your own storylines? I um, or working on something. I had my I had my characters. Um, my storyline, I just can't. <laughs> no. No, I. Uh, in fact, those characters are, are honestly those are on the back burner. Okay. Um, like really, really far back. I haven't brought them out mm-hmm. back to life since, or I haven't even seen them. Actually, I did see them this past week. I found a um, a little copy that I had written a bunch of notes on in one of my old sketchbooks. Uh-huh. I was cleaning up this past weekend, and I found like uh, that that copy paper, and it had all my characters on them. And uh, I'm like, "Fuck! I remember these guys. They're like 20 years old." <laughs> wow, that's a long time. And I'm like, "Man, I haven't touched these guys in, since then." But what I did do was I created another character, which is kind of, I call him the Little Pine Dude. Okay. Um, he's kind of a smart ass, kind of like my alter ego. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's kind of like me, but I kind of don't present myself that way, or I try not to. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know I do come off like an asshole sometimes, but this guy is kind of like... Um, He's a smart ass in a stupid way. Okay. Um, and I made him this way for because I want him to be able to, to um to I want to be able to tie him in with with uh different areas such as politics, uh religion, film. Okay. You know, anything. Uh he can I can put him anywhere and it'll clown on the situation. Almost like a uh Cantin plus guy. Kind of, yes. Yeah. <laughs> But a little bit more Americanized, of yeah. course. Um, I was going to make him a comic book. But now that I've gotten into um, After Effects and into um, Premiere, and I've, I found a really cool app called uh, Adobe Character. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that does is that makes your character move. Okay. Because I had the idea of getting my nephew to make him in 3D in Maya and making movies out of him like that. But then I, I thought, well, that's going to lose the old comic style from it. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want them to be 3D. But I kind of want everything. <laughs> yeah. But with this char- this Adobe character um, um, software, I can draw them out and, and scan them, bring them into Photoshop or Illustrator and make them move. Kind of just like a regular car- uh, traditional cartoon. Okay. I'm like, well, shit, that's pretty cool. I've always been into cartoons. Fucking technology, huh? Right. Yeah, and I don't have to do all that um, that frame animation. <laughs> yeah. So that would save me a lot of work, a lot of time. Would you be opposed to um, if someone like uh, 
I don't know how comic books really work, but I don't think Stan Lee wrote or drew all of them. He came up with the stories, right? right? And then yeah. somebody else drew them. Right. Would you be opposed to like if somebody came up with a cool story and goes, "Here, Pine Do, draw it, draw <laughs> it," sort of thing? Is that something that you'd be interested in if you if you really look like the story or I've yeah. I've been approached with things like that. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, I was approached uh, a couple of times. Actually, more than a couple of times. Mm. And I think when people approach you, I don't I don't realize they know how much time goes into an illustration. Yeah. Um, it's it's a whole lot <coughs> different writing a story versus illustrating it. Mm -hmm. Just as it is of, of making a movie and, and and doing an illustration. And they think, OK, here's my story. I'm done with it. It's all on you. Mm -hmm. Well, you're like, well, shit, that's going to take me about a year to finish. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, I've been approached, uh, like I said, multiple times. They're like, okay, um, what about these characters? Do you know what they look like? They'd be like, no, that's your your job. I'm like, well, um, not really. Yeah. Well, it kind of is, but it really isn't. Um, you're there to finalize it. Yeah. Right? I, I got to fine tune them. They're like, well, this is, this is what I, uh, this is what they're supposed to look like. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, but once I, like with one guy I was, I started working with him till he kind of pissed me off. <coughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what, bro, this isn't going to work. Cause I was giving him sketches back and forth, back and forth of, he had maybe about 10 characters and I would sketch something up for him, shoot it to him and say, oh, that's cool. But that's not my character. I'm like, well, shit, why don't you send me your character if you already have them? Yeah. And he's like, well, because I want you to come up with them, but that's not what I'm visualizing. I'm like, okay. Mm. So I'd shoot him another sketch, and he'd come back with the same shit. So again, I did it on on multiple characters for him. Yeah, and I'm like, you know what? This isn't gonna work. <laughs> you know, we still haven't even gotten into into um into illustrating or giving you samples of uh the settings, um, the placement, uh, or any locations as to where the story takes place. And you know, with the characters, we're already having a hard time. And I, I stopped it before I spent more time on it. Yeah. Because I knew that once we get into the sequential art, it was going to, it was going to be hell. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't think it was worth my time to do that. Yeah. And I think it comes back to what you were saying in the beginning. A lot of these people don't know what they want. Right. They, they approach it like, I know, well, I know what I don't want. Right. And that's not fair to anyone. No. Yeah. That, that was, it's, that's, that's definitely not fair. That wasn't fair to me. Yeah. Um, knowing that they had already finished the story, now I just got to put everything else together. It's like you're done. Now you're gonna sit and wait for me to finish it. Yeah. It's like if it was a team effort, or if, you know, not to bring money into it, because I know a lot of people do things for passion, not for money. Yeah. But <coughs> bills don't pay themselves. Yes. Right. I'm a freelancer, but my work isn't free. <laughs> right. Exposure don't pay the bills. You're right. whatever. Yeah. Unless you're like fucking, you know, a r somebody really famous, mm -hmm. and of course they'll give you all that exposure, and the work comes in, which has happened. Um, but Joe Schmo comes in with with the script or with the story, and wants you to draw it out, and you're gonna have this big hit, and he has no connects or nothing. Then, yeah. Then what do you do? You know, you're kind of just spinning your wheels, mm -hmm. tossing out your ideas, and it's kind of for nothing. You know, it might be something successful like the Ninja Turtles, but it's a chance you kind of got to take. But personally, I I decided not to take on projects like that. Yeah. Um, unless it's unless I know it's somebody that's gonna give me a return on on my my investment. Yeah. On my time. Okay. And uh, I've had a couple that um do want to give me a return on my my time and they do have the exposure um but again they're busy and i'm busy and so we're just kind of sitting on it so, so i mean it would really just take somebody with already at a budget to basically try to hire you full time to go hey this right. is what i want to do and and right. be ironclad with the ideas and be able to compensate you properly for your time in order right. to dive deep into that correct i didn't know if so many people just came at you like hey draw this for me <laughs> you know dude People come at me with the weirdest things. Uh, it, you know, girls, <laughs> females. Mm -hmm. um, we're in a time where people feel privileged. Uh -huh. uh, I think. I think that based on looks, people think that they deserve things. 
And I've gotten messages where they're like, hey, from females, of course, saying, mm-hmm. hey, can you draw me? Um, I'm like, sure, here's my, my rate. Oh, well, um, then I get a tip pick. <laughs> I'm like, well, what does that do? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to spend five, six hours, and I just saw your tits. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what is that going to do for me? Is that what you want drawn for the my rate? <laughs> it, yeah. it doesn't. It doesn't add up. And I think that that nowadays it's we've gotten to a time where it's really stupid. Yeah. Um, like I said, everybody thinks because they have a presence on social media, because they have a certain following, because they know somebody else's cousin, they they are privileged and they deserve or they're owed something everybody's an influencer now yeah, quote everybody, unquote right everybody's an influencer that's terrible that's yeah that's really bad and it's one of these things where like uh hey man if you can't tip don't go out to dinner <laughs> yeah you know it's yeah. just uh i find that very fascinating to say the least it's kind of offensive too i mean oh yeah right <laughs> it's kind of it's Offensive and degrading, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, you have nice tits, but you're kind of lowering your standards for a drawing. <laughs> yeah, and you you kind of want to go back and like, hey, well, nice tits, but they're not worth my art, right? And I then mean, you throw it back on them, and then <laughs> they they're like, well, fuck you, you know, this is whatever, right? Fuck you and your art. Sort yeah, of thing. you're not even that good anyway. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, then why the fuck you ask me that? Right, sort of thing. Yeah. You know? I'm sure you get that a lot too, as a photographer, yeah. right? Yeah, and unfortunately, it it happens almost every day. Yeah, and uh, it's just um, and it, you know what's funny? It it's uh, I get it from actually uh, girls and guys. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I get it to like, oh, I'm I'm going to be a model uh, soon, soon, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, until then, you know, this is my rates, and they go, you know, yeah. well, I'll get you all this exposure, and it. Um, yeah, it uh, it happened a lot more when I was starting out. Yeah, when when I first uh, like I said, when this guy uh, reposted my my illustration of him, I was getting people saying, "Hey, I know this person here. I know that person there. I know um, uh, Snoop." There was this one girl that hit me up saying, "Hey, why don't you draw Snoop for me? I know him." I'm like, "Really? Where do you live?" She's like, "I live in Long Beach. I don't know where Snoop lives." <laughs> well, he's from Long Beach. He's but from I'm Long sure Beach. You don't live there anymore. Right? I'm sure he doesn't. And then she's like, ah, oh, my, my daughter goes to school with his daughter. I'm like, hmm, does she go to private school? Mm-hmm. I'm, sh- I'm sure his kids go to private school, right? Yeah. She says, no, she goes to school over here in Long Beach. Da, da, da. I'm, I don't know the area, right? I'm mm-hmm. from L.A., but I haven't been there. In a, you know, I haven't lived there in a while. I don't know how much of this is true, but I wasn't going to take the time to draw a snoop for her. Yeah. When I had other work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it would have been great exposure. I mean, I could do it now. I don't mind doing it now. It's actually something i want to do yeah but um you know begin when when you're starting everybody just wants to take advantage of you and you learn the hard way how to um pick those people out yeah and unfortunately I, it's the hard way yeah yeah what about just fucking doing snoop and then sending it to him direct and fucking bypass the middle person you know yeah. i mean <laughs> come on you know one thing i i was really fortunate um i'm big on usc Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of became a stalker. <laughs> oh yeah. So I I found a way around around the whole system of I can't get to Snoop, but I'm gonna get to somebody else who knows Snoop. Yeah. And being into the UFC, I got to meet a few um fighters that way. Mm-hmm. I didn't know them, but I came around the back end. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. And my artwork did get to them, and I did get to meet them. Nice. I um, I was privileged to have lunch with one of them here in, in Scottsdale. Oh. Um, and I was like, what? I remember um, I messaged her husband. I'm like, hey, um, check it out. Here's a, I drew your, your wife. He's like, oh, cool. I'll give it to her. So she reposts it. <laughs> oh, nice. And I'm like, oh, cool. Then I drew her like three times. Mm-hmm. And then... uh. One time I saw her post that she was riding bikes here in, in Phoenix. And I'm like, hey, are you guys in Phoenix? I know if I send her a message, she's not going to know who the hell I am. Yeah. Right. She's not going to see it. She's got fucking half a million followers. Okay. So I send him a message. 
I'm like, hey, are you guys in Phoenix? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, you guys want to have lunch? <laughs> 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 and, you know, I'm always expecting to get shot down regardless of what I do. And he's like, yeah, go for it. I'm like, no shit. He's like, yeah, let's uh, let's have lunch. Oh, wow. I'm like, hell oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it worked out. I, I was able to hang out with, with, with them um, for a few hours, uh, chit-chat. Um, really nice people. Um, but, you know, like I said, there's always means of of um, getting to somebody that that you admire mm-hmm. um, and um, being known by them. Yeah. And I think you and I have that the advantage of, I don't want to say normal people, but people in, in general, because we have something different to offer than just saying, hey, I'm your follower. Yeah. You know, we kind of have a, a trade where we can we can lend them that will also benefit us in the long run. Yeah. There's a, uh, you know, it's, and it goes back to, you know, some people don't want to have a special thing that they do. Right. A lot. And that's one of the things that I, uh, I want to kind of bring up with this podcast is like, you know what? I don't think you can, you have to be a photographer. You have to be mm-hmm. an illustrator, graphic right. designer, but you have to do something. Yeah. And, you know, if you're going to be the best at something, right? have a passion for it and get off your ass and do it sort of thing. Yeah, I know I'm not the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even on my posts, I get people talking smack about, hey, it doesn't look like her. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. So I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And then I go back to their profile. I'm like, okay, what do you do? Yeah, exactly. Selfie, selfie. <laughs> exactly. It's like, dude, yeah, keep your mouth shut yeah. sort of thing. Right. What um hey what did you think about this last Conor McGregor Cerrone fight? Did you watch that one? I watched that one and I was disappointed. I was disappointed because um <clears throat> it didn't seem like if that was Cerrone, I I that was a different person to me mm-hmm. personally. It, it seemed like yeah that was the same old McGregor whatever I'm gonna win, but that did not seem like Cerrone. I thought. He was just there to make um make a check. Yeah, I'm. I have, I I have heard that too. And for what I'm following from Cerrone, is it didn't seem like he was ever that kind of guy. Yeah, and I that's, thought that's what gets me. I thought that he had a lot to lose by losing this fight because I think it was his last shot at probably getting a belt somewhere. If he if he beats the shit out of McGregor, I think he gets a legitimate chance of winning a belt somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, finally being champion. Yeah. After fucking record breaking fights and wins that he has. Right. But what I take from it too is that <coughs> he needs to stop. I he's think he's punch drunk. And true. He's and I love the guy. I've been following that guy forever. Right. And he's just like Hey man, and again, I don't like McGregor, but I I know he's a monster. I know he's he's a he's a great fighter, and he and he caught fucking. I always keep thinking like he caught him with a punch that maybe a younger Cerrone would have been able to take, right? And that's what really puts me into like this perspective of like I'm all for limited fights in mm-hmm. professional fighting, right? I love boxing. I like you UFC, mm-hmm. um, but I think forty fights is enough. I yeah. think that's it. <laughs> and if you didn't make it in forty, 40 fights, to the head are, are enough. Yeah, yeah. there's a forty professional fights are enough. I mean, you look at um, uh, y- you can look at somebody who like uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh yeah, senior. Yeah. You know, 80, not, not junior plus fights. <laughs> yeah, and no hundred something, right? Right, was it? Yeah, I don't know. He's got. I think he's got. Pretty close to a hundred fights, wow. or somewhere over, where he was. He, the guy was fighting basically every month at one point, right? And uh, you know, he was. But everyone knows that he had a hard head. That's what they talk about. He's got, and you look at him now, and he's still there. He's not, you know, in the sport where I look at uh, Muhammad again Ali. Muhammad Ali, who is arguably arguably the greatest of all time. You know, he says so himself, <laughs> but a lot of people say that as well. Is that the guy who's considered the best at something went out with brain damage. And that's got a lot to say with uh, with how many punches he took to the head, whether the Parkinson's and the Alzheimer's mm-hmm. uh, 
were directly related to that. No one has any definite proof, but that shit sure didn't help. Right. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm like, you know what? It, and you you see, uh, a lot of people just there's one too many, um, bad retirements going yeah. in to where it's like you know it, you see them later on in life. I mean, and they're just like they're gone they're they're yeah, not and yeah. let alone some of them die you know and it's just like god damn i was watching the um hernandez aaron hernandez yeah yeah about how all that trauma to the head from football yeah just fucks up their brain yeah and thinking being in boxing or being in an mma i mean kicks to the head jabs to the head i was thinking about it, i'm like fuck just getting a jab to my face having my head um yeah hit back it's like oh shit now try doing that like 50 times <laughs> yeah what is that gonna do to me you and know, what does that do to them and and those are jabs yeah those are jabs those are not hard hard punches yeah once you got your power punches in yeah that's, that's and then when you hit the mat <sighs> yeah so that's like a double hit yeah and it's man it's 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 an issue to where um I'm like, hey man, th- I'm all about martial arts. It's a form of art to me, you know. Yeah, I, I exactly. love it, and I love uh, f- fighting, and I love that stuff. And you know, as as barbaric as some of it may seem, there's still a situation where we need to, hey man, enough is enough. Yeah, and keep people from coming back. Like I love George <laughs> Foreman, but if it was my world, I would have never allowed him <laughs> to come back. No, yeah, he came back for one fight, and that was it, right? Yeah, no, he came back for a few and won his championship again. Yeah, he did, after being an old man. Wait, was that when he was champion, when he was was real old? Yeah. Not not real old, but he was was older. Yeah, so he had his career as a young man, Yeah, retired, and then came Came back. back Made champ, right? And then became a champion again. (laughs) Yeah. And it was like, you know, and you you look at George Foreman, and he he seems to be all there, sort of stuff. But, I mean, sometimes I I listen to... uh, Roy Jones Jr. talk, mm-hmm. and I'm like, God, <laughs> boy, hold on, man. You you know, you just I don't understand everything that he right. says all the time, but, you know, he, yeah, one more time. I mean, it's just like, and, you know, the, I just like, dude, just, and w- when I see that Cerrone thing happening again, I'm like, that guy needs to stop fighting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I he was he put up some great fights, but he needs to stop fighting, and, Again, that after that many fights, you're going to tell me that you don't have some sort of brain damage? Yeah. Not only that, but I mean, think about it. If you're... I think it was... A, personally, I think it was set up. Mm-hmm. Because if you want to make money off of off of a name, at least. And I think if McGregor would have lost that fight, if, we get, if the, he would have gotten the Cerrone that was the real fighter, I mean, how are you going to make money off of McGregor? He lost three fights in a row, right? Diaz... Um, Khabib and Cerrone. If he would have lost, if yeah. he would have lost, yeah, three fights in a row. What does that do to his career, to his name? I mean, does that make him just like as a kind of like a one-hit wonder in the UFC? Now he's a Ross, a Ronda Rousey again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it does nothing. But if he came back from a loss, won again, I mean, you got the name. <laughs> he could make a ton of money off of that. Yeah, I mean, and the thing is too, does. Does the like the question is does Cerrone um, deserve a rematch? Just on his on his record, the answer is yes. Right. But yeah, again, I don't want to see does. it. I don't want to see it. I can't. <laughs> and it, and you know I. It's like seeing Canelo Triple G again, right? Yeah, he's exactly right. I mean, I, I don't, don't see it. I don't want to see that either. I mean, as much as and here's my thing with that one too. It's that um, I'm a huge Canelo fan. All right. But uh, I had him losing the first fight by five rounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then come the second round or the second fight, I could see the argument for a draw. Right. And again, I'm coming from my man Canelo. And don't get me wrong, I love Triple G too. Right. But even on that second fight, I had Canelo down by two rounds. And I, I, I'm a pretty good... I I think I'm a pretty good uh, scorer when it comes to boxing. I, it's mm-hmm. rare that I get it completely wrong, and uh, you know, yeah, I, I'm pretty good at it. 
So when Canelo won the second fight, I'm like, okay, well, because I, I can see some rounds going either way. I could right. have saw it. I understood it more. I wish that one was more of a draw, but yeah, yeah I definitely even, see that one. even that way, though, I mean, I saw Triple G's last fight, and he looks old. He looks tired. Yeah, and, <laughs> it, and it's like, dude, if they if there was a third fight, I would hate to see Triple G just get obliterated. Yeah. Because he struggled with a guy that was nowhere near Canelo's uh, caliber. And uh, he punched him. He knocked him down in the first or second round, maybe uh-huh. even the third round, and then he couldn't finish him. Oh, shit. And then the guy came back and ended up, uh, he, he didn't win the fight, but he ended up making it real close to, I'm like, that's. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> no, getting... Canelo would have torn him apart. Yeah. And where, where Canelo's fighting right now, man, it's just crazy. How did you feel about the, um, was it Joshua and Andy fight? The last one? The last one? Yeah. Um, well, I felt bad about it because. Uh, Why? Which reason? <laughs> because the the Mexican guy got the shit kicked out of him. And he came in ill-prepared. He came in, I don't see. Uh, he just, you know, you can talk about and speculate like, hey, you know what? The the fame went to his head. Uh, you the, the Everything went to his head. He wasn't mm-hmm. prepared. He was fat. But you know what? At the same time, not to take away anything from Joshua. Mm-hmm. Joshua, right? Yeah. Yeah. Joshua, um, he came in ready to fight. Right. He was determined not to duplicate what he had done in the in the first fight so but going back to the first fight i mean looking at it do you think it was a way or means of getting the hispanic crowd to invest money into another pay-per-view um what do you mean like uh a lot the immediate rematch or yeah oh yeah no doubt i mean right first of all i mean i think that uh I think it would even invest the uh, the British crowd from investing in another pay per view because they want to see their boy, who was supposed to easily win, right? Get his get the shit kicked out of him right. by a fat Mexican <laughs> guy, and so I think that they definitely wanted to they definitely wanted a rematch, and I think they definitely wanted to see what happened in the second fight. Yeah, but then the second fight was mostly a marathon, from what I saw. <laughs> a what marathon? For for um for Joshua, where he j- just hit and run, you know, yeah. hit and run. I mean, that really to me wasn't a fight. Well, I I have like just I I have my I like I know so it's hard to get in there, and and I know it's hard for for somebody to say that because you're not a boxer, you don't know what it takes to be in there. Yeah, I mean, but from a spectator point of view and from marketing point of view. It's like, okay, now are we going to have a third one? Because he beat him in the first one. Oh, I don't think you see a third one. You don't think? No. I, I think that it, might be a third if one. If you, it wouldn't be right away. Anthony Joshua yeah. was going to, or, um, um, uh. Joshua? No, no, no. Um, uh, fucking. Ay, ay, ay. The Mexican. Uh. Canelo? Antonio, uh, or Anthony. What's his name? Yeah. Anthony. A- Anthony. Garcia. Anthony. No, Garcia. Was it Garcia? No. No. I forgot his last name. Uh, but he's going to have to work his way up. Oh, okay. To get another tie fight. So he's going to need two or three more fights before he can get back up there because mm-hmm. he's not uh, he, he w- he's not ready for that weight or He was he got beat I mean for being a champion. Right. He got <laughs> he got destroyed. I mean But wasn't he playing yeah. like the Mayweather card? Um Joshua were That's one thing I hated about Mayweather. It's like he hit then then he'd run. Um then everybody says well his strategy is that he's going to wear him out by having them chase him, then in the later rounds, he's going to take him out. But when I saw him fight like Canelo, it's like, okay, Canelo kept on chasing him, and he he really didn't do much. And that's one of the losses Canelo has, that he's like, well, I want to redo that fight because, you know, he really wants he wants to fight. He doesn't want to be chasing him. Well, that's, well, why, though? First of all, I love Floyd Mayweather, and I mm-hmm. love his boxing style. He's yeah. a champion. He's you gotta, defensive, right? You got to come to him. Right. And Floyd Mayweather didn't always fight that way, but he ended up coming up with a style that, as a champion, you got to come to him. Yeah. And Madonna probably came closest to really rocking him and hurting him. Manny Pacquiao didn't do shit. No. Um. And again, that another guy who's fighting too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And, and I'll get that. But when uh Floyd Mayweather fights, I I don't see him running. As much as everybody wants to, I mean, he sits there and he'll he'll hit you, 
right. and he'll come back and he'll he'll do what he needs to do. But yeah, but then he'll step back and have you go after right. Him. Yeah. But it, it's not his fault that the other people gas out by the time it's <laughs> you know around seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and he's yeah. that's when he does his thing. And yeah. you know that's I love it. I think he he brought boxing to a science to where he he can't be beaten or right by it's someone. Pretty genius. I, I'll give him that. It's, yeah. it's pretty genius, but. I mean, for me, I think I want to see a brawl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and there, that's that's different. Like, uh, and there's certainly that, but yeah. I mean, you can see brawls like um, like Hatton and and Mickey. Uh, those two fucking is it Hatton or um, God damn it? Those they had the trilogy or four fights, and they beat the shit out of each other. Yeah, and uh, I fucking the name put myself on the spot. The names I forget the names, but it was it, it, these two white dudes going mm-hmm. at it, and they. Bap, 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 and they won. They went one fight, two fight, three, yeah. and it was just yeah. a brawl. But those two guys are terrible fighters. I mean, they're not <laughs> terrible. I don't like to say that about boxers about being terrible fighters because right. you know it takes a lot of balls and training to get into yeah, boxing ring. But they weren't never elite caliber fighters, right? To the point where they were beating anybody that was worth a shit. And you know, they the minute one of them, either one of them, or one of them fought Oscar De La Hoya, bam. Put away. The other one they fought, you know, Floyd Mayweather back in the day, bam, knocked the fuck out. So uh, it's, again, you know, they say style makes fights sort of thing, but. Yeah. And it's just like, so if you want to see a brawl, you know, you get like, I I don't, I don't see Joshua getting into another brawl ever again in his life. No, I don't. Because he knows he can't. Yeah. And I mean, if that guy who was. And to, to the little fat guy. Yeah, the little <laughs> fat guy. He, I mean, he's got fast hands and of course he's got power. Yeah, he's got power. But um he's gonna he's gonna get need to get more disciplined if he wants another crack at that belt. And right now there's always those what the in the heavyweight division there's always these three or four guys right mm-hmm. now. What is it, Wilder, Tyson Fury, I think they I don't know if they fought or they're fine here soon. And Joshua and I think I'm missing another cat or two who are yeah, always in the sure. in the thing with the fights and I'm like, eh, okay, yeah. whatever. So, but yeah, man, I don't I don't see. And Canelo is right now like that guy is the the boxer in the world right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I just love the fact that he went up to light heavyweight and beat the shit out of somebody. Right. He's a he's very smart mm-hmm. for what he does. I mean, I, boxing is. A lot of mental thing, yeah. Um, where you gotta know where to hit and how to hit and how hard to hit. But he's very smart at that. He knows uh, how to take a punch and he knows where to hit it. I think he. Uh, and personally, I think he learned a lot from his Floyd Mayweather fight. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. That's his only loss or his only loss, yeah, recent so loss. One of his most recent losses. Yeah, and he's just crazy at it. And again, Manny Pacquiao is the the guy. When he, I don't know if you remember when he fought that cat in Australia. And he got robbed. I mean, he was it recent or it was about was it Marcus when he got knocked out? N- well, he it was after Marcus. Oh yeah, after Marcus, he just disappeared, didn't he? <laughs> no, well, he keeps fighting, but he ended up fighting this guy, and I think he obviously keeps fighting for the money. Right. Um, his last fight, he says he didn't. He didn't. Um, his last fight, he didn't really say or not whether it was going to be his last fight. A lot of people were contemplating or or uh, speculating that it was uh, probably going to be his last fight, but. But he had said that before. The, the, yeah. So, but a couple years ago, or maybe, yeah, it was about close to a couple years ago, he fought this cat in Australia and destroyed him mm-hmm. to where it was obvious. But he, but he, one, he didn't knock him out. Okay. And two, he allowed the guy to stay in the fight. Okay. So he's fighting the Australian guy in Australia. Mm-hmm. So come decision time, he loses. Pacquiao loses? Pa- yes, he loses to a decision, and everyone boos. Everyone says this is the worst thing that's happened. <laughs> it is crazy. And I, mean, I sit there, and I'm like, Pacquiao was up by five rounds. If anything, if you're going to fuck him out of something, you could have said it was a draw. But he straight up lost. Now, in my mind, is like, okay, that shit happens every once in a while in boxing. Yeah. But a younger Pacquiao would have knocked that guy out. Yeah. And it's just a testament to how old he's getting to where he needs to put him up. Yeah, he does. And I hate that because it's like a Pacquiao on his prime 
would have knocked that guy the fuck out. That guy has no business fighting Pacquiao mm -hmm. in his prime. And now where Pacquiao is still a decent boxer, good boxer, he's he's struggling with this guy to put him out and because he couldn't knock him out, he loses a yeah, fight. Loses you know, fight. <laughs> and it's just terrible. So that's I, mean, I think that's one thing I like I loved about the USC is like if you don't knock somebody out, you're gonna go to draw and mm -hmm. you lose a fight right away. Yeah. And uh I know that's the same in boxing, but I just felt that but I happening into it was happening too much in, in boxing where it was like, Okay, this guy should have won because yeah. he's got more experience. I'm I kinda I gave up on boxing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, and you know, now you know is is UFC do you draw from UFC as far as uh, motivation, inspiration? I know you drew the uh the one UFC fighter. Yeah, I drew But you really it is that I pretty much draw from whatever pulls me or whatever I'm, inspires me at the, at that moment or at mm -hmm. that time. Um, last year, I wasn't all that much into UFC. Okay. As I was the previous years. But um, I kind of want to get back into it. Um, simply, but in a different style. I want to I wanna do different styles now, not just that anime style. Mm -hmm. um, simply because I think I, I miss the way I used to draw. Okay. With all the detail and everything. Being simplistic in, in design and everything is cool, but I miss putting in all the detail. <laughs> okay. Putting in all the work. Yeah. Um, as some would say, you know, they both take different amount of work. Um, one is thinking of how I'm going to do it, simplify it, and the other one's just putting all the detail in it. You know, it kind of goes both ways. But yeah, I kind of want to go back to my old style in, in a little bit different way um, which was a little bit more of the uh, american comic style okay yeah not more not that anime style but it's hard um because i've tried a couple times to go back to that and it kind of hasn't worked out maybe because i'm so used to this new style uh oh but i like i said this year my my purpose is to go back that way and I don't know how it's going to affect my anime. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I guess I'm willing to take a chance. I, 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 I'm not going to learn anything um, if I don't take a chance and, and go back to that or even mix the two. Yeah. Um, but like I said, this anime style is not really even anime. It's just something happened. I don't know what happened, but it happened. It's anime inspired. Inspired -ish. anime, yeah. Do you see that... Is does that affect your commercial work at all, or do you do a good job of separ separating your commercial work from your personal work? Yeah, that's completely separate. I try to, actually, I do. I can say I separate. They're they're two completely separate things. Mm -hmm. um, whatever I do in design is not affected by by anything I do in illustration. When it comes. <clears throat> I've had a couple of people say, "Hey, we wanna we wanna hire you for design." Okay, I'm like, okay, um, which which side? <laughs> okay, <laughs> you want illustration or you want design? They're like, yeah, we want design, and they're like full time employers. I'm like, all right, cool. And once we we get to talk, um, this one cat says, um, okay, cool. So you're gonna be designing this and that, and you you could incorporate your illustrations into this. And I had to tell this guy, um. I can't. I'm not going to incorporate that into this. Really? And okay. he's like, well, why not? Isn't I'm going to hire you, so whatever you could do, you could incorporate into to my company and doing your style into my company. I'm like, I can't do that. And he's like, well, why not? I'm like, well, because that's my style. That's not your company style. And he felt offended that mm -hmm. I wouldn't give him like all my 100%, including that part of my my style, I guess, or yeah. my, my business. And it, um, I was okay with it. He, he says, okay, cool. Then we'll keep you in mind. I'm like, well, okay. Did you want me for designer? Did you want me for illustration? Uh -huh. Which did you want? Cause from the get go, from when I started, from when that started coming up, that style started coming up. I, I said, you know what? This is going to be completely different from design because I know that somebody's going to want to say, Hey, you worked for me all this time doing that style of design, so that style is already mine. <laughs> yeah. Right? We kind of own that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, no, I don't want to incorporate that with you. Uh -huh. That is 
not to be selfish, but I think that's something that I want to leave for my kids, um, for myself. It's mm-hmm. not something to go into a company to say, okay, we got this style because it's already gone because you were here. We don't need you anymore. We know how you do it. We're going to do it. Gotcha. So I, I tell people, you know, I tell like that guy told him straight out. I'm like, that's not coming. <laughs> okay. So if you want to hire me, cool. I'll, I'll do something different. But I'm not going to do that. Not for your business. If you want somebody that wants that style, I'm going to charge you full price, whatever I charge. And if you want to mark it up, go ahead. Okay. And he felt offended. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. So it is important to separate yeah. and keep some stuff for you. Right. Yeah. It's. It, it wasn't like that, but I think it came to that point simply because, um. I've gotten popularity with artists and names that can bring me up further than working for a company. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, this guy was starting up his business and he wanted me to incorporate that. Well, if it's starting up his business, it's going to bring up his business with my style. What if I leave? Yeah. He can't do that anymore. Okay. Right? Yeah. But then he gets a right over my style, so that's not going to work either. Yeah. So, like I said... um, I want to build that up to where I can animate it, make comics out of it, and just kind of make it Pine Do Studios and make it grow as that. Yeah. Not just give it away to somebody. So it's not really a matter of, quote unquote, selling out. Right. It's not about selling out. It's really preserving your style to Correct. do what you want. Correct. And not have someone else, hopefully, not just doing what they want, but at one point stealing your style right which is very doable <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, i had um it's kind of like the emojis uh, uh-huh. the i don't know if you have snapchat i had i used to you used to okay you know how in snapchat you can make your own little character yeah okay well people think that because they can make their own character in snapchat they own it mm-hmm. they don't it's part of Snapchat. It's all in the terms and conditions. Whatever you build on there is theirs. It's not yours because it's their style that they made. Mm-hmm. It's the same with me. Um, I remember a girl <laughs> mm-hmm. sent me a message saying, hey, where did you get the app to make those cartoons? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's I a love pi- it. <laughs> I'm like, it's a Pindu app. Yeah. And she goes, really? Where'd you download it? I'm like, well, my mom downloaded it like a long time ago in 1975. <laughs> I'm like, and there's only one. <laughs> And she's oh, like, shit. oh, shit, you doing by hand? I'm like, yeah, those are mine. There's no app. It's me. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want a drawing, uh, I'll be glad to do it for you. But this is my rate. Yeah. And she kind of felt stupid in a way. Like I said, my little character makes people feel stupid. <laughs> 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 and uh, I was OK with it because it's not an app. It's me. Yeah. I, you know, making it an app is not a bad idea, but... <laughs> I don't know. I just got to work on that. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a bad idea. But Not to uh, bite on your style, but uh, yeah, when I put up a picture that I made using film, right? it's like, hey, what uh, what app did you use right. to do that? No, <laughs> well, that's called a Kodak Tri-X app. Yeah. Then it's like, well, what the fuck is that? And I'm like, no. Nah, <laughs> it's pretty funny nowadays where... And you know what? There is probably a filter for that shit. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's harder to have a an app for yeah something so <laughs> uh, uh, um, dead on, something so specific right. as your drawing is in uh, on that. So yeah, I think that's that's another thing that I I've come to hate about the times we live in now. Mm-hmm. People think that because they can get an app and make a logo. They are logo designers. Yeah. They can take a picture with their phone. They're photographers. Yeah. They can make an emoji, a cartoon. They're illustrators or or comic artists or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's sad because it's like I tell people, can you do that without the app? Can you do that without your phone? And that's one thing I can do. It's You take away my phone, you take away my computer, I can still do the same thing. Mm-hmm. How many people out there can do that? Yeah, exactly. Same same with you. I mean, anybody could put a filter on, on the phone, but can you go out and take the picture and, and make it look like, you know, like you do? I know I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I easy. can't, fo- I can't yeah. Photoshop it and make yeah. it look like that. But even without Photoshop, can I do that? I'm like, no, I can't do that. 
Yeah, it's and it's it's something special that you you've learned that you you mastered and these people just take it for granted. They're like, "Oh, we want an app for it." Yeah, and I do think I have I, I think it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. yeah. Be, because I want people to get creative with the tools that they have. Yeah. And sometimes I think maybe like in my from my point of view, sometimes I think like, "Okay, maybe photography shouldn't be so difficult." Right. And a lot of people believe that it isn't. And, you know, we were talking a little bit about how I like to shit on <laughs> wedding photographers and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and, uh, but it's like, you know, no, it should, it's, photography is, a camera is just as, again, and I'm, I keep fucking bringing this up every single time, a camera is just as difficult and as complex as an instrument as a guitar. Right. And, you know, you need to learn it, how and what, all that shit does in order to be a guitarist. Right. Just like you need to know all and everything that it does in order to be a, um, a good photographer, a photographer right? and yeah, stuff. And yeah. it's just like, you know, it's, but again, if it keeps somebody creating something, yeah, I'm all for it. Like, yeah. you do it, but just kind of, I don't know, man, just kind of be, think outside the box a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's just, ah, it's, it's like, just like, everybody's doing, doing the same thing. And it's like, do you want to be different or do you want to be a cookie cutter yeah. photographer? Exactly. Or a cookie cutter illustrator mm -hmm. or designer. And I don't. I don't want to be a cookie cutter illustrator. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I have the skills of, of doing different styles, um, which I haven't done in a while. But I know I if I dedicate the time and I go back and do it, then I can. Um, you know, just to bring up something, back when I was in college... Um, I did a, uh, a five by, no, was it a three by five illustration in my life drawing class? And it was pretty photorealistic. Mm -hmm. And what happened with that illustration, it was, it was a charcoal. Um, we had a, a model come and sit for us and, and I pretty much drew her pretty photorealistic. Uh -huh. Um, kind of like what Picasso did when he was, when he was a kid. And I'm like, oh fuck, I did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, I remember the teacher goes, or the instructor goes, that's pretty badass, bro. And uh, he's like, can we use it for the art show? And I'm like, yeah, go for it. So they took it. They used it for the art show. And that was the very last time I saw it. What? Yeah. I guess they sold it. They did something to it. I, I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if the school kept it. I have no clue what happened to it but I haven't seen it since. Wow. And I remember um, him telling me, he's like, you got skills. You can, how, he asked me how long I've been drawing. And of course I gave him the whole story, right? I'm like, since I was a kid, I just picked it up. Mm -hmm. um, but he's like, you got skills, you know, compared to your classmates, you're like on another level. I'm like, oh, cool, thanks. Yeah. But it, it kind of um, saddens me a little bit nowadays because I see people doing photorealistic things. Yeah. And I think, well, what's the difference between that and a camera? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't get me wrong. I admire the fact that they could do it. Yeah. Because I was able to do it and it took me a while to learn it. But I'm like, how about putting a little bit of your style, your touch on it mm -hmm. so that it's not just a picture. And that's cool too. But I think once people start getting creative and, and stepping outside the box and giving it their own little style, kind of like I did with my anime. Yeah. It makes it a little bit more, it gives it a little bit more value. Yeah. Um, like I said, because anybody could take a camera, take a picture, put it on a light table, trace it, and give you the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. But not everybody can take it and change it up a little bit and give it a, a different little touch of, of style. Yeah. And um, that's, how, that's how you make it your own. Yeah, that's how you own your own stuff. You yeah. own your own work. Um, you People see you as different from everybody else. You know, like the photographers, the wedding photographers, they're all the same photographer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're not, but they're all doing the same thing. What makes you different? Yeah, it's very how difficult to discern a style yeah. or a photographer from, from right. one to the next. Right. So where do you see... Um, 
moving forward on your, on your work and on your work, what would you, what's like your, your dream project or your dream job at this moment? Uh, I My mean, dream project. Because it seems like you've gone through, you've gone through a lot of styles. Right. You, if you put your time into it, you're pretty much, it sounds like you can get it done. You can perfect it. Right. Um, do you still want to finish a, a comic book? Do you want to maybe do a full cartoon or what, what's your, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to do a comic book, but I I think I have fears. Mm -hmm. The fear of not continuing to do it like a regular comic book series. Okay. So, um, Spawn, for example, he's on number three or four hundred, and it's taken him like what twenty years. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, if you do the math, it doesn't really add up. It's supposed to be one a month or one every two months. Nope. Maybe it does add up. Yeah. But um, well, no. I I kind of. As a comic book, I want to be able to do my comic book with this anime style. Mm -hmm. But I kind of have the fear of saying, okay, this is the last issue. Being five issues into it, being one story into it, and calling it done. Then saying, okay, now I want to make this book a movie mm -hmm. or an animation. And then saying, okay, now what? Do I want to make more animations? I already did that. Yeah. Then I, I, I kind of don't know where i want it to end i really don't because i think well shit what if i alter my style <laughs> yeah which, which is was what i was talking about earlier adding a lot more detail but keeping it anime so it's a it's a real i don't know uh, a lot of uh i've learned in my life that the more i plan the less it happens <laughs> okay yeah i hear uh, you Every time we plan something, it, it never goes the way you expect it. I mean, yeah. there's some people that have that niche that say, fuck it, we're going to plan. It's going to go like this, like that, like that. Boom, it happens. Done. But, yeah. Not with me. Well, you know, not to, I'm not trying to tell you what to do or go, you know, do the, well, if I was you sort of thing. But yeah. uh, to take, going back on an anime thing and on a manga series, it's like, if you go on an anime, some of these animes are just 12 episodes long right. and then they're done. Some manga series are just, while they are, can take years, but for yeah. the most part, there is a beginning and the end, and then they, you know, um, they move onward and upward or something like that. Right. Uh, that's never, I mean, as far as an option for you, like, okay, I'm going to make this story or this comic book, make it 10, 12 issues or something right. like that. Because right now, even like in, uh, in the long format on TV series, I really love things like True Detective, like um oh um even even stories like black mirror sort of oh, yeah. thing where uh, true detective is one season 10 episodes long done next next season true detective completely different sort of thing happening mm -hmm. 10 10 um 10 things done and in black mirror they just break it up into bunch of little bunch of little episodes. vignettes sort of yeah. thing um so so my question is like in the comic book world I I do understand like there's Superman yeah. 5 million 234,000 right. and there's another one yeah. coming up. Then let's reboot start all over again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to where Same story but a little bit different. A little bit different, drawn different probably yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. And I understand that num those are money makers and things like that, yeah. but and I'm sure the stories end up repeating somewhere some along the line, but uh making a comic book with that um uh are you married to the fact of like it has to be a longevity sort of uh, series, um, or would you be putting okay, this is a story, uh, once upon a time, uh, the middle, and then happily ever after sort of thing, or not so happily ever I, after? I'm not opposed to it, but I guess from the time that I've been into comic books, I see them kind of going on the longevity. Mm -hmm. Um, but I really am not opposed to just finishing a one story but then i think cool i'm gonna do a five issue series then what <laughs> uh -huh. then am i gonna split it split the characters give them their own series or their spin-offs yeah i mean can i do that or can i just hand them off to somebody else have them do that or would i come up to start yeah. it's it's a it's a possibility well like quentin tarantino yeah um now supposedly you know he's gonna make his 10th movie and, and leave right um but supposedly, um, all his movies are in the same universe. Yeah, Machete, Kill Bill, and all those. Yeah, they're all from the um, 
Inglorious Bastards to Pulp yeah. Fiction to yeah. you know Reservoir Dogs. They all have they all take place in the same world. So some characters are related to some other characters, and mm-hmm. you know I didn't know uh, that. Foxy <laughs> Brown. Yeah, they they're all if you pay attention to them, they're yeah. Now I'm having trouble putting some of them together, right? But they're all supposed to be uh, in the same. Same universe. They're they're all connected somehow. Okay. They're all supposed to be connected somehow, and uh, that might be a, an idea. Like the the biggest example that people go into is that um, um, Reservoir Dogs, right? And Pulp Fiction. The um, uh, one of the guys in Reservoir Dogs is brother with uh, Vincent Vega. Okay. Uh, in Pulp Fiction. And uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, you're good. And uh, uh, that's the biggest like connection. And then there's a, a couple other connections to where man, I'm again I'm putting myself on the spot. I can't remember a couple other ones, but there are um, some people are related to other people mm-hmm. in uh, in his world. Okay. Sort of thing to where I think you, the, even going back to Django and Chain, somebody's somebody's related to somebody else. I mean, I fuck, I can't remember. But anyway, man, now I'm gonna have to go back and look at it. Yeah, and there's a. I'm sure it. There's a. Um, there's an article online yeah. that, that <laughs> like the Star Wars the, uh, family line. <laughs> yeah, like the Star Wars family line. But uh, yeah, somewhere along the line, there's a uh, there's there's yeah connections between everybody and stuff so mm-hmm. but yeah i mean yeah I, I i keep on going back to that simplifying like when i was taking animation in school um my instructor always told me simplify your story and have a beginning middle and end kind of like what you said mm-hmm. you know, make it if you can narrow down your story to one sentence it'll probably be successful yeah i mean so far i can't <laughs> i mean i have like alternate not alternate but i had a uh, Multiple scenarios going on. Uh-huh. Um, I guess I, when I was building my my comic in the first, in the beginning, I couldn't. Um, I wanted each character to split up and have his own thing, but then when I was doing that, I noticed that in the comic book industry, whenever that happened, they had the character died off, and it wasn't as important as it was when. It oh. Was in a group. Okay. And. I think I learned from that. That's cool. Um, that you can't. Uh, it's kind of like a band, you know. You can't. Yeah. You can't keep them. You can't just bring in a new member and have it be the same band. <laughs> it kind of kills the, the vibe, I guess. Yeah, and Mick Jagger's work away from the Stones is never as good as he was right. when he's on the Stones. Sort right. Of thing. It's kind of uh, like the Guns yeah. N' Roses thing too. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, but hey, man, you. you um, it's an idea, though. I mean, it's. The you know not to again not to tell you what to do or anything but as far as like uh, telling a great s- story, mm-hmm. uh, very simplistic style, that's that's Ernest Hemingway in right. uh, in a nutshell. I yeah, mean, and, uh, I'm a huge Ernest Hemingway fan. I mean, yeah. especially his short stories. <coughs> yeah, um, that's like a simplistic way of telling a story that really hits home and stuff. So, um. Yeah, then getting, it's like, okay, am I going to be writing? Am I going to be illustrating? Getting my mm. ideas from my head to my to paper is kind of difficult. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think that in pictures, I'm better. Yeah. But then again, like I was saying, when I was doing that book, I didn't write it down. I just went. I, it was, it just flowed. Okay. Um, they were in my head. I just did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was no script, no anything, and I was done. But now, as I look back, I, I think, shit, I need to write this shit down. Yeah. And to make it flow a little bit better, give it yeah. a better feel. Um, but I don't have the time for that. And Man, then that I don't know if I should just take the phone, record myself talking, which I have done. Then I listen to myself and I'm like, damn, mm-hmm. you have a horrible voice. <laughs> <laughs> like, stop talking. No way. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know. There's a lot of uh, things about me that are just off. <laughs> no, I mean, it, I just wish that one day... Um, yeah everything we all have the time to do it i mean i've been working on my script for past 10 years you know right. and that's oh, just yeah. like god damn it i mean <laughs> in, the, in the premise you know it's a good story yeah but in the end it's like okay so what's the middle and what's the end sort of thing yeah so. then how do you make it flow from the beginning to middle to the end yeah and that's yeah. the whole you know where you need time and and uh to yourself to do that and yeah 
you got to be careful sometimes you know when you ask for time you um you can't do much with it sometimes <laughs> you know you sit here yeah. and, and hey, you know, but sometimes but it is the best thing you know yeah um i think the times where i was off not doing anything not doing any illustration mm-hmm. they kind of helped me um because when i went back to drawing I, i'm like oh fuck now i could do this okay <laughs> all right and i don't know if it's something that just my brain clicked back at it clicked back on and said you you got this uh like perspective um oh boy i sucked with perspective okay but then when when i came back i'm like fuck it i'm gonna do perspective i was throwing those anime style of perspectives were like fish eye views and i'm like holy shit i could do this i mm-hmm. didn't know i could do that okay I'm like all right cool <laughs> let's incorporate this and that but you know people don't ask for that people are asking for like hey i want a picture of me and my wife i see juntitos <laughs> <laughs> I got right, but put her head over here on this body because she wasn't so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, All right. but you do see that taking a break does allow you to yeah. breathe a little bit creatively, yeah. and then uh, when you attack it again, it's it it's good for you. Then, yeah, I've I've definitely noticed that. Um, in fact, this year and last year, I hadn't posted anything since. In fact, the last the last drawing I did last year was Billy's. Mm-hmm. That was the, and I did that in the beginning, no, in mid-December. Since December till about last weekend. Okay. I didn't do anything. I was busy working on on graphic design, not illustration, and I figured, fuck, okay, jump back at it. So when I jump back on it, I'm like, okay, now I want to put more detail into it. Okay. I want to make the colors brighter now. And it kind of worked. Um, I like them a whole lot more than what I did back then. Okay. You know, and it's just a year. It's um, about a month and a half of time off that where I didn't draw anything. Mm-hmm. I didn't even do my little character, <laughs> which I was I was so used to doing them on a daily basis with whatever was um, was trending. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, I'm in the thought of bringing them and doing a daily thing now with him. And I've slowly started doing that. And I know that it's different from what it was before. OK, I can feel it. Yeah. And I know when I put them out, it is different. Um, same with the drawings, you know, with the regular uh, customers paying drawings. Yeah, nice. So it just, the time off always helps. At least for me, it does. Even though I, I, I kind of think it doesn't. I think it's, I'm just spinning my wheels, wasting my time doing nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm always busy doing graphic design. I'm working. Um, but it helps. It's helped me. <laughs> Yeah, and it, again, it, it, the just because you're doing graphic design, mm-hmm. it, that doesn't mean that you're working on your personal stuff. You right. actually learn how to separate them both. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, like my yeah. day job and my graphic design are two different things. Mm-hmm. Then my illustration is a different thing. So, <clears throat> when I work with Danny, I I do signs, interior mm-hmm. signs, uh, exterior signs, illuminated signs. So I get into the details of of how a sign works, how it's built, how it's fabricated, screws, uh, light bulbs, all that shit. And then when I go back to drawing, oh, and and even environments where it's going to go. So when I go to my drawings, I'm like, well, shit, I could incorporate some of that here. (laughs) Uh I know how that works. Okay. Now I just got to look at how vehicles work, how that works. How it's people think that, okay, when make me a drawing, you know, you know, um, it's not just a boom. There you go. You know, there's thought that goes into it. You got to analyze how how things are are made and designed for a purpose and how they move. Like cars, I don't draw many cars, but now that I've looked at them, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, fuck, it's got this, it's got that. I don't know what the parts are called because I'm not big on cars, but I'm looking at them like, okay, cool. Yeah. If I incorporate them in a drawing, I'm going to be putting all that shit in it because it's there. And when somebody's into cars, they're going to look at it and say, hey, you're fucking missing this or that or that. Well, I don't know. I'm not into cars, right? Yeah. But you don't want to piss them off. Yeah, exactly. You want to pull that crowd in also. So about two years ago, I was working with a guy on guns. Um, I was doing his graphics. And I learned about guns and how that community of um, gun owners know every little thing about a gun. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I just, he's like, hey, I need you to design. Um, my last design for him was a um 9 11 11 19 19 11 19 11 <laughs> yeah a handgun so when i designed that for him he got really picky on on everything that go 
or, or how that gun was made. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Because if all these people are going to look at it, they're going to nitpick it. They're going to come back on him. Things going to come back on me. And it's just going to be a whole shit. Okay. They're going to say, your gun looks cheap. It looks fake. Mm-hmm. And uh, I learned that when looking at something and how it's made and how it works, you got to put everything in to please those people. Yeah. Simply because you don't want to shun them away. And of course, I'll come back and say, hey, why don't you do this car for me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're kind of uh, setting yourself up to get more business in, in that yeah. aspect. That's um, what. That's exactly what, uh, what Arnold Schwarzenegger did in Terminator. He learned how to shoot guns the correct way. Yeah. And when people looked at him, they're like, dude, it looks like you knew how to shoot guns. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I went with that instead of the Leonardo da Vinci one where <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci actually used to... Um, uh, dissect cadavers, oh, even yeah. though it was considered, you yeah. know, a heretic, and he could have yeah. been, um, you know, hung by the church. Yeah. <laughs> but he did it because exactly what you're he saying. Wanted to learn. He needed to learn how it moves so that he could draw it better. It's funny because when I started uh, my that comic book series, mm-hmm. I started working out. This was before I um I was married. Mm-hmm. So when I started working out, I was uh, following Arnold and I was following his diet and all that. I'm scrawny. I'm a little guy, mm-hmm. but. I noticed that when I was working out, I'd, I'd feel myself, <laughs> not in a bad way, yeah. but I'd feel myself to see where my muscles were, uh-huh. okay, and how they worked. And when I would draw something, I'd, I'd check how the arms would move or well, in a different perspective, how yeah. they would look, and it all helps. And once you I, – I remember taking my, my artwork to, to a comic uh, convention at that time, um, and I showed my work to um, – I forgot what his name is, Garza, I forgot what his first name is. So I showed it to him, and it was a girl holding a gun. <clears throat> and he looks at it, and he points that out right away. He goes, hey, are are you familiar with guns? This was back in, in the day, so I'm uh-huh. like, not really. He was like, yeah, I could tell. That's a toy gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he points that out, and then he goes, oh, and she's got her hand gesture isn't right. And I'm like, fuck, how is he picking that up? Well, he draws this every day. He he was drawing a um, oh, fucking I forgot what it was. Uh, I forgot what the series is called, but it it had a, a bunch of guns and heavy machinery and all that shit. And he knows what it looks like because of course he had to research it to put his comic book together, right? Yeah. And when of course when he does that all day, he's gonna know mm-hmm. that's not a real gun. Yeah. And I think from back then I kind of learned that or I tried to pick that up, and what that guy was doing guns with, I had to. You know, try to get everything zoned in, zeroed in, so that if somebody calls me out on it, you know, I re- it's there. Yeah. You really can't say, it's like, what kind of gun are you holding? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do you hold it? Or wow. What kind of rims are those? You know, when cars, when I'm drawing cars. Or yeah. It's, it, and it's just a drawing, right? It's yeah. Like, it's just a drawing, but dude. people, nowadays, people complain about everything. <laughs> yeah. So, so, again, going back to that entitled uh, society we, we, we live in now. Sort yeah. Of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, man, thank you so much for hanging out, man. I can keep you forever and go on and talking about a bunch of things, especially probably UFC and fighting, oh, yeah. and then um, you know uh, the drawings. Because I, how about we do a part two, man? Because I really want to see Definitely. where you go with uh, the comic book stuff for sure. I go mean, for, along with a bunch of other stuff as well. But um, I want to see where little Pine Dew goes uh, yeah. and does his thing. You know? Yeah, I think um, Pine Dew's kind of like those daily news cartoons yeah are you gonna see them every day clowning at something stupid like the iowa caucus yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm sure he's got opinions on that right the iowa caca <laughs> yeah and uh what tomorrow i guess there's gonna be a vote at the, the impeachment yeah which i think there's yeah. probably not gonna go but i'm sure he's got opinions on that too yeah so yeah that little guy just uh says whatever he wants yeah <laughs> for sure all right but yeah man. definitely thank you so much you got it and uh yeah talk to you for sure talk to you soon man <laughs> Orale, pues. Orale.